Now the part of the show that I know everyone likes to see, three ideas or three things that individual investors need to be focused on, in my opinion, before you make your investment decisions. And a lot of times we have similar uh, topics here because economic data is usually very, very important. Earnings are very, very important. We have a new one here, number three, we'll get to in a second, but here we have it, all eyes on big cap tech earnings. Earnings season has kicked off in the United States. Big banks reported earnings. We've talked about those in the past. Uh, earnings came in pretty strong, but as I mentioned, you really don't have a, a real kickoff to the earnings season, or at least until you have the big tech earnings, because tech, as we know it, makes up such a large part of the market in North America, especially in the United States, not as much maybe here in, in Canada, but in the US, almost 50% of the S&P is tech. And the big tech names, the MAG7, make up over 20% of the S&P. So all eyes on big tech earnings, we'll touch on that. Multiple economic indicators will set the stage for the next Fed rate decision. We've already had some uh, economic data come out, jolts yesterday, we saw GDP numbers out of the US, we're going to get PCE tomorrow, and last but not least, jobs data on Friday. So what are the, what is that data going to tell us, and how will that affect our investment decisions? And our third point, U.S. presidential candidate comments and how they impact markets. And we've heard uh, so many comments out of the, the candidates, right, whether it's current Vice President Kamala Harris or former President uh, Trump talking about different aspects of the economy speaking about different companies within uh, the United States and, and their thoughts on that, definitely moving uh, stock prices and definitely moving the overall market. So these are the three things I think you need to focus on. And let's start, obviously, with all eyes on big tech. There you have the Magnificent Seven, Alphabet, Amazon, Apple, Meta, Tesla, NVIDIA, and Microsoft. Tesla reported last week, fantastic earnings. Tesla reported Unbelievable earnings, stock jumped 20%. Uh, Mr. Musk, I think uh, how much money he made that day, I, I couldn't even count. But last I heard, you know, he was worth uh, quite a bit of money uh, and, and, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars. And on that day, I'm sure he did quite well. But recently, uh, this week, uh, last night, we received earnings report from Alphabet. And the way earnings work is you kind of want things to be kind of slow, have expectations come into earnings, uh, kind of, you know, not sure, bit weak, people are a little cautious, because if that company then comes in with great earnings, that sets the stage for a, a nice, significant rise in share price. And that's what we saw with Alphabet. We have a chart of Alphabet here, formerly known as Google, or Google makes up a part of Alphabet. Alphabet's the parent company. And you can see on the right-hand side of this chart how Alphabet is fair not so well really it hasn't moved much in the last six months or so it's from a peak uh, in july that they reached but i'll read out some numbers for you uh from google operating margin grew 32 percent revenues up 50 percent year over year earnings per share up 37 percent year over year search revenue that's their that's their uh their search that's what they get most of their 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 profitability from a lot of people were nervous about that because of ai because of the competition with from Microsoft and others. Search revenue up 12%, just under $50 billion. YouTube ad revenue up just under $9 billion, uh, well above estimates. Google Cloud, now this is the cloud. We've been talking about Google Cloud. The biggest in cloud is Amazon, followed by Microsoft, followed by Google. Google for a long time was growing their cloud business, 20, then 25%, then 28%. Well, Google Cloud grew 35% well above uh, expectations. And that's obviously uh, because of the demand in AI infrastructure. So you couple all those great numbers. On the other side, yes, we have some regulatory issues. US government is talking about uh, perhaps breaking up Alphabet or Google into some parts because they have such a monopoly in search and other areas. So there's that risk there. And again, there's the AI, AI risk as well, a risk of artificial intelligence. Are they keeping up with their competitors? So earnings, earnings from Alphabet set the tone for a lot of other stocks, stocks like Meta, for example, Meta uh, stock as well. But before we get to a chart on Meta, let's go to a company that didn't fare as well, AMD. We have a chart on AMD. So AMD, opposite of, of Google or Alphabet, 
they came into the earnings season on a high note. You can see here the day the, the trading before the same day trading, the stock was up almost four percent, up almost six dollars a share, and their earnings where the bar was set so high, they met expectations and even exceeded it a little bit. But because the, the bar was set so high, investors stole, sold the stock. Stock is down today by quite a bit. They came in line with expectations, a 92 cents a share. Their revenues actually were up 17% year over year, beating expectations, but it was their forecast. It was their guide going forward was slightly below what the market expectation was. Now, Lisa Su, the CEO has been on TV already this morning talking about their, their latest chips and how they're going to be great and how they've gained a lot of market share uh, with that. You know, their AI uh, business came into the year. They were projecting uh, projecting $2 billion. They upped that to $4.5 billion by July. And, and, and their most recent conference call yesterday, they increased that to $5 billion. So coming in at $2 billion, increasing to $5 billion, that's a fantastic year, yet the stock is not reflecting that. And that is because earnings are or were predicted to be very, very good. And I guess when you're trading at a multiple, as we talk about on the show all the time, earnings multiples, PE ratios, trading at around 45, 46 times earnings, you're going to have to be pretty darn perfect with a, with an earnings uh, uh, expectation or what you come out with with earnings, with respect to earnings, to, to warrant that high valuation. And they just did not meet. So these are two companies that I wanted to touch on. Earnings season is so important. And we have a couple of other big tech names. As I mentioned, Meta, we can put that chart up next. Meta chart, uh, we had some great ad numbers out of Google. That should bode well for Meta. Meta here showing at 588 a share. Uh, but I can tell you that when uh, after Google reported such a dominant number last night, Meta stock went up in sympathy with uh, uh, the Google shares as well. And they were trading over 600 last night. So I'm looking for some good things tonight out of Meta. Maybe the expectation there is too high. Uh, we also will see Microsoft tonight. We don't have a chart on Microsoft, but Microsoft will report earnings tonight. Let's see what they say about their AI uh, and their Azure or cloud business. Uh, two other names that we have charts on, Apple reports Thursday. Again, the expectation coming in is high. A lot of people think that they will not meet that expectation. All the things that are going on in China, not sure what's gonna happen with Apple. Uh, their China business, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not good. Uh, doesn't seem to have slowed down from the numbers, but we keep hearing out of China that things aren't going as well. Apple Intelligence being introduced into their products. Are people buying their products now for Apple Intelligence? Well, you need, I think it's the iPhone 15 or 16 to get those uh, products. So uh, we'll see if that spurs on some, some growth. And our last chart here, I believe that we have is, uh, is one on Amazon. And we can pull up our chart on Amazon. Amazon's been doing quite well, stock trading at about $190 a share. Amazon's a bit of everything. And I think with Amazon, I think the key to their earnings release will be how much money they're spending versus how much money they're making. So earnings season, off to a great start. We want to look at these big cap tech names for guidance and to see how uh, the stock market will perform and the stock market will behave. Second point I wanted to touch on is the economic data. All the data that has come out and all the data that will come out in the next couple of days definitely will affect what the Federal Reserve is going to do next week at their meeting on the 7th. Data always is uh, going to affect the Fed's decision. They always say they are uh, data dependent. We had a JOLTS number yesterday. What is JOLTS? Job openings and labor turnover is what JOLTS stands for. We have a chart on that. And what we want to see and what we are seeing are the jolts numbers coming down. These are job openings. We want to see less job openings. When people are moving from job to job, they are perhaps getting more money here, or more money there. That is not good for inflation. So we want to see job openings start to shrink a little bit. We had too many job openings, or the U.S., I should say, had too many job openings, uh, I guess, a few years ago. And it's nice to see that these job openings have come down. Next report we have here, next chart is a number that just came out this morning. GDP or growth in the U.S. came in at 2.8%, down from 3%. Expectation was 2.9%. Interesting thing about GDP, they actually have something within the GDP numbers themselves. They actually have a PCE number. We're going to have PCE tomorrow, and we can actually pull up a chart on PCE, which is our next chart. 
but they actually have a quarterly PCE number that gets released with GDP, not to confuse everybody, personal consumption expenditure number gets released with the growth data that came out this morning. And it actually shows that PCE or the inflation number was about one and a half percent on a quarterly basis. So that's a really low number. That's kind of like CPI in Canada, inflation number in Canada was 1.6. So what does that mean for the actual PCE monthly number that comes out tomorrow? We could see a number below 2% possibly. If that were to be the case, could that lead to another Fed uh, cut of 50 basis points come next week? Or will they just stick with the 25 basis point cut? So economic data is very important. And last but definitely not least, we have a jobs report in the United States. They're going to report jobs on Friday. I think in Canada, we won't report till next Friday. We had 142,000 jobs created in the United States the month of August, uh, uh, sorry, month of September. And uh, what will the uh, October numbers show us? Will they show another big number? We're expecting 100,000 jobs created and uh, we'll see what they report. So overall, economic data, and the Fed is data dependent. We want to see what the data shows us. That'll tell us if interest rates will continue to be cut in the U.S. Um, obviously, the meeting for the Fed is not till after the election. So I'm not sure if the election uh, will have an effect on uh, what the Fed does, but uh, we'll have to see. But definitely as an investor, you want to keep an eye on the economic data. Our third topic, which is the U.S. presidential candidates and their comments and how they uh, how they affect the stock market. And I guess the best examples of that have been uh, former President Trump. He's talked about the chip uh, industry, the semiconductor uh, market, and how Taiwan has basically stolen the chip market from the United States. Not happy about that. He wants chips to be made here in the, or I should say in the United States, not here in Canada, but in the United States. And we know a company by the name of Taiwan Semiconductor, the largest global uh, maker of chips, and uh, NVIDIA is their customer, Apple is the customer, AMD is their customer. They can't make chips fast enough to, to service the needs of all these companies. But here we have presidential candidate talking about how he wants to bring back chip making to the United States, maybe companies like Intel. So we've seen uh, Taiwan Semiconductor get hit hard in the last little while on days where uh, former President Trump speaks about that industry. We've also heard former President Trump talk negatively about Meta, uh, spoke negatively about Google and how YouTube, unfortunately, uh, uh, it did not allow uh, the former president to show some information on YouTube. Uh, the, it was blocked, so he wasn't too happy about that. So every time uh, a presidential candidate speaks about something, whether it's the vice president talking about raising taxes and how that'll affect the stock market or talking about individual names, that definitely impacts the stock market. And definitely something that I think individual investors need to, to keep one ear on uh, when you listen to the news. So overall, these are three things that will affect the stock market uh, over the next couple of weeks. And I think three things that you should be focused on before you make your investment decisions.